Daily Code. Today I'll show you how to create this animation with Touch Designer. Before we move on, please subscribe to the channel so that we can keep on making tutorials like this. Now let's start from scratch. I already opened an empty project. Now let's split the screen, activate the top viewer and right click to deactivate backdrop tops. Let's create an out and turn the render flag on. For the next step we're going to create a torus shape. So let's press tab, go to sops and add a torus sop. Right click on the torus to add the geometry. Right click on the geometry and while holding shift select the camera and the lights. Let's add a render here and a transform and on the parameter window of the transform set the alpha parameter to 1 and turn on comp over background color. Connect the transform to the out and there we have our torus on a black background. Let's go back to the torus and change the orientation to C axis and we're going to make the radius a little bit smaller. What we want to achieve for the next step is create a lot of these toruses, one after the other, to create a circle. To do that, let's press tab to create a circle sop and let's attach that to a null. Click on the circle and let's change the arc type to open arc and the orientation to zx plane. Go to the geo and let's turn the instancing on and let's drag the null from down here to the translate operator of the geo. Set the translate x to p0, translate y to p1, translate z to p2. Switch here to geometry viewer and let's have a look at what we did. We notice here that the rings do not make a good circle. Let me re reduce the amount so that we can distinguish better. Like this we can see that all the toruses are facing the camera which is not what we want. Instead, we want the toruses to be oriented on the circle. How do we do that? First thing, let's click on the circle and add a SOP to CHOP so we can pass the data of the circle to CHOPS. If we zoom in, here are the coordinates. We need to get the derivative of these coordinates. To do this, right-click to add a slope operator and right-click again to attach it to a null. Let's click back on the slope operator and in the parameter window go to common and turn off the time slice. Now we have the derivative which really is only going to give us the speed with which the orientation is moving. If you are confused about this we're going to see soon what that really does. Let's click back on the geo and in the parameter window go to instance 2. Here we have a rotate operator and we're going to drag and drop the null down here. Set the parameters of the rotate2 operator to tx, ty and tz respectively. So now we have the toruses oriented to the circle. Let's quickly make the radius of the circle slightly bigger so we can notice better and once we're here let's increase the divisions again back to where they were in the beginning. For the next step we want to animate the scale of the toruses so that they go from big to small in a cycle. Let's set the pattern, go to the parameter window and in the channel change the name to scale. If we zoom in we can see that the scale goes from minus 1 to 1 and we only want it to go from 0 to 1. So let's change it. Press tab and let's add a math operator. In the parameter window go to range and the range we're on is minus 1 to 1 and the set range is 0 to 1. Now that that's settled let's right click to add a null. Click back on the geometry, go to instance and in the scale operator we're dropping the null we just created. Set scale for the x, y and z coordinates below. Now the whole thing disappeared and we owe all this to the error here in the geo that tells us that all three nulls here have to have the same amount of samples, which they now don't. The bottom one has a thousand and this one only has 31. So let's fix this. Go to pattern and in the length we're going to write down an expression and we're going to reference this circle and get the amount of points. So of circle one dot num points. Great. Now we see the torus's size goes from one to zero and from zero to one. Now let's animate the pattern. In the parameter window, if we change the face value, the torus's move inside the circle. 
So in here we're going to write down apps time that seconds times 0 0.1. For some fine tuning, let's reduce the radius of the torus and increase even more the amount of toruses we have to 100. Only a few steps left, let's switch to the viewer and see that the camera in this position does not give a fair view of the animation. Switch back to geometry viewer and here we can see where the camera is. An important trick here I only learned lately is that by clicking here on select and transform and it will already have the camera selected, we only need to turn on the transformation handle up here to be able to shift the camera along the axis. Let's say we want the camera to be inside the circle, so let's just move it up here. Let's switch to top viewer just for a second to see how this looks. So okay, the camera is inside the circle, but now let's say we want the camera to be filming the inside of the circle. So we just need to rotate it. Let's just rotate here the Y until the camera is seen inside of the circle. Go back to the select and transform again, click on the handle, make sure to select the camera and change the location until it fits perfectly inside. We can also check out the view here on this camera in the top viewer mode. So while we control the camera, we can see the immediate change. We can change the position again and shift it in the white translation so we can perfectly see the rings coming at us. That's one camera position that looks nice, but let's go ahead and experiment with another position. Let me move the camera and the lights and let's copy paste the camera here. Drag and drop it to the render and select parameter camera. So we still have our old state and it's safe for us to experiment with the new state. Let's select here the second camera. Click on the select and the handle. Make sure you have also selected the camera node and move the new camera. The old one stays where it is, so I'll move the new camera up on the Y axis and experiment with the rotation until it has a view of the animation that looks pleasant. To make it easier, we can also put the second camera node viewer active and with a mouse, move the camera further away. Let's turn on top viewer again and to have a better effect let's also duplicate the lights. Make the lights viewer active and with the mouse we can scroll to change the location of the lights as well. Great, now we have it. For some extra effects let's go to image filters on the palette and drag and drop the feedback edge. On the parameter window we can change the color to something we like and lastly connect the feedback edge to the transform and to the out. Play with the values to achieve an effect you like. And whenever we want to switch the view to the other camera we only need to connect the other camera to the render and that will do it. If you notice on this view that the animation is a little edgy, just go to the torus and increase the number of rows and columns. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found some inspiration. If you have any questions, write them down below and I will see you on the next tutorial. Until then, have a nice time. Bye!